Hi everybody, Nurse Scott here. How are you? And welcome to another episode of uh, this podcast. My, uh, my, uh, the book that I started to write, I'm still working on after all these years. Um, yeah, what can I tell you? Uh, I get inspired and then I lose interest and now I'm inspired again. And I realized that what's there is enough to share with you, even though it's not really fit for print just yet. So this episode of The Emergency Mind, The Psychology of Emergency Department Patients, Families, and Staff is Chapter 5. The hospital is a scary place. Reluctance to seek medical attention. Before we start, if you like this video, please sh be sure to click like. If you're watching this as a video, if you're listening to a podcast, check out my YouTube channel, Nurse Scott. And uh, also consider subscribing to this channel. Click subscribe. And click the little bell so you'll be notified when new videos are available. You don't want to miss anything. All right, so um, without further ado, here's chapter five. The fear of seeking medical attention is a common phenomenon that affects a large portion of the population. In this chapter, we will explore the various reasons why people might be reluctant to seek medical attention and some of the implications for healthcare clinicians. A fear of having a serious illness is not just a fear of the unknown, but it's also a fear of facing life-altering changes. The social stigma attached to certain illnesses, such as HIV and AIDS, mental illness, addiction, and alcoholism, can be a source of shame and discrimination. The fear of these negative consequences can keep people from seeking medical attention, even when they have symptoms or health problems. This can be a dangerous situation, as delaying medical treatment can make a health problem worse. Another reason why people may be reluctant to seek medical care is the feel of painful tests and examinations. People may have had previous negative experiences with medical procedures, or they may have heard horror stories from others. This fear of pain can be particularly pronounced in those who are needle-phobic, or have a fear of invasive procedures. This fear of pain can also extend to the fear of receiving treatments that might involve surgery or other invasive procedures. This fear can be magnified by the uncertainty of the outcome and the possibility of complications that may arise during or after the procedure. Some people may also worry about the long-term effects of these treatments, such as scarring or chronic pain. Furthermore, these fears can also be a barrier to people seeking preventative care, such as routine checkups or screenings. This can result in people only seeking medical attention when their condition has reached an advanced stage and is more difficult to treat. Embarrassment can be a significant barrier for people seeking medical help, particularly for sensitive or personal issues. People may feel uncomfortable discussing personal details with a healthcare provider or revealing aspects of their lifestyle, such as substance abuse or sexual behavior. This can be especially pronounced for adolescents who may feel uncomfortable removing their clothing for an exam, or they may fear that their parents will learn about personal information during an examination, including substance abuse and sexual activity. This embarrassment can lead to delays in seeking medical attention, which can negatively impact their health and well-being. The high cost of health care is a widely recognized issue that can discourage people from seeking medical attention. Financial constraints and the fear of incurring high medical expenses can be a major barrier for individuals, particularly those who are uninsured or have limited financial resources. The high cost of health care services can make people feel overwhelmed, and they may delay or forego necessary medical procedures, tests, or treatments, which can result in a decline in their health. This can also lead to long-term financial difficulties, as untreated or delayed medical conditions can often become more serious and more expensive to treat. To address this issue, many governments offer public uh, health insurance programs, financial assistance, and other resources to help make healthcare more accessible and affordable for all individuals. Another reason why people may be reluctant to seek medical attention is the fear of being treated unfairly. They may fear being judged based on their race, sexual orientation, gender identity, or other personal characteristics. In particular, African Americans may have a cultural memory of past injustices by the medical and scientific community, such as the Tuskegee Experiment, a clinical study conducted by the U.S. Public Health Service between 1932 and 1972. The study involved 400 African American men with syphilis, who were told they were being treated for bad blood, but were not given adequate treatment for their condition. 
The study was intended to observe the natural progression of syphilis, and the participants were not informed of the true nature of the study. The Tuskegee experiment is considered a violation of medical ethics and a major stain on the history of public health in the U.S. The study only ended after widespread public outrage and the participants and their families recovered, received compensation and medical treatment. Knowledge of this tragedy, or at least the mistrust it caused, has been passed down within the black community. This may partially explain why they can be reluctant to trust healthcare professionals and to seek care when needed. For many members of the LGBTQ community, the fear of judgment and discrimination is a significant barrier to seeking medical care. In the past, and even today in some cases, medical providers have been known to discriminate against patients based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. This can range from being dismissive or disrespectful towards the patient to denying medical treatment altogether. These experiences can create a sense of distrust and fear of the healthcare system, leading some LGBTQ individuals to avoid seeking medical attention, even when it's needed. In the examination setting, LGBTQ individuals may also be reluctant to discuss their sexual history or practices due to the stigma that still surrounds homosexuality and alternative forms of sexual expression. This can prevent them from receiving appropriate and comprehensive medical care as a full understanding of the patient's sexual health and practices is critical for accurate diagnosis and treatment. The fear of missing work or school can be a significant deterrent for individuals seeking medical attention. People may be, may be concerned about the impact that taking time off for medical appointments or treatments will have on their work or academic progress, such as falling behind on important deadlines or responsibilities. This can be especially pronounced for individuals who are dependent on their job for financial stability or who have responsibilities for children and the elderly. This fear can lead to delays in seeking medical attention and can result in the pr progression of medical conditions. Employers and academic institutions can play a role in reducing this barrier by offering flexible leave policies and accommodations for medical appointments, as well as promoting a culture of health and wellness. This can help to ensure that individuals are able to prioritize their health while also fulfilling their other responsibilities. Finally, people may be reluctant to seek medical attention because they fear being reported to law enforcement or immigration authorities. For example, criminals may be afraid of being arrested or having their criminal activities exposed during a medical exam, while the victims of domestic violence or sexual assault may fear reprisal from their attacker. This fear can lead to delays in seeking medical attention, which can have serious consequences for the individual's physical and emotional health. On the other hand, some people seek medical attention even when it's not needed. These are often referred to as frequent flyers. These individuals often have underlying psychological or behavioral issues that cause them to repeatedly seek medical care for non-existent or mild symptoms. There are several different conditions which predispose non-ill persons to seek medical care. Hypochondria, also known as health anxiety, is a condition in which individuals are excessively worried about having a serious illness despite having no or only mild symptom symptoms. They may seek frequent medical attention and undergo numerous tests and treatments, but their symptoms do not improve. Malingering is a deliberate act of feigning or exaggerating symptoms for some personal gain, such as avoiding work, obtaining pain medications, or receiving disability benefits. Drug seekers are individuals who repeatedly seek medical attention to obtain prescription medications, often for non-medical reasons such as recreational drug use. Munchausen syndrome and Munchausen syndrome by proxy are both forms of factitious disorder a condition in which an individual intentionally produces or fabricates symptoms of illness in themselves or in another person, such as a child, for the purpose of gaining attention or sympathy. The individual with Munchausen's may invent symptoms, tamper with medical tests, or harm themselves to produce physical symptoms. When a caregiver does this to the person they care for, it's termed Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Both of these conditions are serious and require prompt intervention and treatment. Individuals with these conditions often have underlying psychological or emotional issues 
such as a need for attention or control, that may need to be addressed in addition to any medical care needed by the affected individuals. Implications for clinicians. The fear of seeking medical attention is a widespread and complex issue that greatly impacts individuals' health and well-being. As healthcare providers, it's crucial to understand the various reasons why people may avoid seeking medical care, as this can help providers better understand their patients' concerns and tailor their approach accordingly. To reduce stigma, healthcare providers can offer non-judgmental care, foster a culture of openness and understanding, and advocate for policies and programs that reduce stigma and improve access to care for all individuals. Healthcare providers should also be aware of barriers that may prevent individuals from seeking medical attention, such as lack of access to transportation, limited financial resources, and cultural or language barriers. Providers and institutions can help to overcome these barriers by offering transportation assistance, financial support, and interpreting services, as well as by creating a welcoming and inclusive environment for patients from diverse backgrounds. Treating frequent flyer patients can be challenging for healthcare providers and requires a different approach and understanding than treating individuals with genuine medical conditions. Providers need to implement measures to identify and address underlying psychological or behavioral issues and to ensure that limited medical resources are used appropriately. The goal is to provide the best care for these patients while balancing the needs of other patients who have genuine medical conditions. In cases of Munchausen syndrome and Munchausen syndrome by proxy, healthcare providers should be, on, should be alert for these conditions and if detected, work closely with mental health professionals to provide the best care for these patients. It's important to remember that these conditions are serious and require prompt intervention and treatment. Clinicians must also contact law enforcement when appropriate when a caregiver abuses a child or an elderly person in this way. I hope that gave you some insight into why some people, when they're sick, are hesitant to come see us. Um, there are certainly good reasons, and there are you know, many different ways that we can try to correct those, but um, ultimately, um, it's up to the individuals, right, to make their own decisions about when to go, when to go to the doctor, when to go to the ER. So, um, if you enjoyed this, please like the video, leave comments down below, tell me what you thought, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't want you to miss any future videos and future podcasts. If you're listening to this on podcast, please subscribe to the podcast. Um, thanks for spending this time with me, and I'll see you next time.